So we will go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, I a poor miserable sinner, sinner confess unto you all, all my sins and iniquities, with which, which I have ever offended you, you, and justly deserve, deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent to them. And, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, Christ to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make, Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell, Tell all of all his, his wondrous, wondrous works. works. Glory in his holy name. Let the, the hearts, hearts of those who seek, seek the Lord rejoice. rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek, Seek his, his presence, presence continually. continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles, miracles and the judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenant forever, the and word, word that, that he commanded, commanded for a thousand generations. generations. Glory be to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Foetus rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. 
He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, earth and in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. St. James wrote, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. The most complacent of individuals must now admit that we are in the middle of a trial unlike anything in living memory. For some, this testing strains their faith, possibly to the breaking point. St. Peter wrote his first epistle to an expanding early church that had growing pains. 
Those people were faced with many issues, community issues. How can you build a community of believers while Christianity is persecuted? Mission issues. If we can't get our own house in order, how do we witness Christ to those who have not heard? Suffering, anxiety, tension to both physical and mental challenges. Many of those early Christians became isolated because others in their family shunned them. Some must have lived in fear of persecution by the Jews. And among all those situations, Peter brings a message of faith and hope. We have a lot in common with those early Christians. Peter's message of hope in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus for the sins of the world is the story for us as well. Now the church today is not breaking any growth records as we can see. In fact, conservative, confessional churches are in decline. We have the opposite problem as the fledgling church in Peter's letter. Our trial and our testing of our faith are however the same. It makes sense that the saints on the other extreme of the path we are on share the same emotional roller coaster. Early Christians bounced between a sincere abiding hope in the Lord's promises and falling into a pit of hopelessness. And we can relate to that in our own time. Doesn't it seem that our faith is enhanced during the festival half of the church here, Christmas, Easter? We find ourselves more appreciative of God's gifts, more aware of our sins and the need to repent. And then it's with joy and hope that we confess those sins and receive holy absolution and the Lord's Supper. And then do we find when summer starts rolling around, that beautiful weather, vacation planning, and things like that, start to push that renewed faith and hope out into a corner. And then, when the trial comes, our spiritual laziness can cause us to start to doubt God's promises. And then we wonder why God is punishing us. Then things are motoring along and we might not reserve a spot in our attention for godly activities. Then it's all the more painful when the trials and the temptations come as an additional surprise seemingly out of nowhere. Now we know that because we have died and risen anew in Christ, there is no reason for hopelessness. But we sinfully forget that sometimes. And we try to climb out of our predicament on our own. Trying to stay hopeful through willpower apart from Christ is exhausting. And eventually it is impossible. When our efforts fail, hopelessness becomes malignant. It eats all of our positivity like a tumor. And all of our energy goes into keeping that despair fed. St. Peter understood this when he said, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Perhaps we're not persecuted yet like the Christians in the first century, but we are beginning to contend with those that are hostile to the faith. Many of us understand the divisions that occur within families. They also occurred during the first century. And we have still more things in common with them. Relationship problems, addictions, not having enough money. Another thing the first century Christians had to coexist with was incurable disease. We can't miss that today. The next, and for some, the final blow comes just as we despair of one thing, only to have another pile on top, a more significant problem. And setback after setback works to erode your faith and turns your hope into fear. And the sin of hopelessness rears its ugly head once again. St. Peter saw that hopelessness in his flock and the Holy Spirit guided him to write this letter to boost their faith and to boost ours. Describing our feelings of hopelessness can prove challenging. It's as though you're moving through a dense fog or trying to push a rope. Nothing seems to work, but there's a solution. In the ancient world, gold was refined by liquefying it in a furnace and the impurities would float to the top and he would skim it off and discard it. 
The same is true of our faith in a time of testing. The trial reforges our faith, and it discards the obstacles of belief. It discards the obstacles and replaces them with belief. Now, God unquestionably tried Job. All of his livestock died. All of his workers died. All of his children and his wife were killed as he was sitting at the dinner table with them. Then he was stricken with great sores and disease, and he lay in sackcloth and ashes, commiserating with his friends until they too started to lose patience with him. They were afraid that his bad luck was going to rub off on him. But through all of that, Job never once cursed God. Questioned him? Yes, definitely. Asked why? Certainly. But he never spoke against God, never once cursed him. He remained faithful. That's a faith that we can look at as an example for our living. Job said, but he knows the way that I take when he has tried me. I shall come out as gold. That's an unshakable faith. That's an affirmation we should make our own. The Lord God said through his prophet Isaiah, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. What trials had those early Christians faced? Meeting in secret, accused of being cannibals, accused of apostasy. They would have been looking over their shoulders all the time, nonstop. Meanwhile, they were trying to cope with an underground movement that was growing by leaps and bounds and a family who probably thought they had become unhinged. What is this cult that you have joined? We become worried and disheartened when we see church attendance is dropping, especially now that we aren't allowed to gather inside. This pandemic is handing out fear about our health, concern about how many people are going to pay their bills when they can't work, worry about our children's education, suspicion that some well-meaning Christian group will make all Christians look like idiots while putting their flock at risk just for sinful attention getting. Then we begin to question, are we becoming spiritually lazy? This is a trial like no other we've ever faced. And we become grieved in this time of testing. Peter wrote, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Residing in God's great mercy for us grants us rebirth into a living hope in a faith that is for our salvation. It is a new birth both now and then. In the now, God preserves us in our faith that rejoices in this indescribable and glorious joy. Like gold purified in fire, our trials serve to strengthen our faith, refine it, remove contamination, and scrape off the accumulated things which are destructive to its beauty. Once we have come through this fire, we are purer, stronger of faith than ever before. Faith, like gold or silver, must be refined and tested and purified so that it may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The strength from which this new faith draws is none other than Christ himself and the hope we have in his atoning sacrifice on the cross. Just like with gold refined in fire, which shines brighter and purer, it then becomes our witness to the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. As our leaders at both the state and federal levels begin discussing ending our quarantine, we can understand now what Martin Luther said was the right way to do theology. And he had three Latin words that he used, oratio, meditatio, and tentatio, prayer, meditation, and temptation or trial. 
sins forgiven and hopeful in the resurrection, we've received access to faith in the hope of God's glory. As we pray and we meditate on God's work in our lives, we become tested as in a refining fire. The devil tries his part, and we've seen what happens to us out in the world. But even this time of testing nears its end. So we rejoice in our sufferings because they show us more than usual the great mercies and love of God. So that refined by this fire, we can truly confess that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Somewhere I have prayers. We pray. Hear us, merciful Father, as we pray for ourselves, for the church, for our nation, and for all conditions and manner of people. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and gracious presence. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith, and comfort the families of the martyrs. Keep your church from following the winds of change, and make her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away with your word, and to restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders in the paths of peace and justice. Bless us with wise, faithful, and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purpose. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that in our neighborhoods and communities, we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, and to those to whom death draws near, especially those who we name in our hearts. Be with those who grieve the loss of those whom they love. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will, and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, in whose name we pray as he has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and inwardly digest them. And that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.